This is Stay Paid, a sales and marketing podcast on a mission to help you close more deals and retain more business. Welcome to another episode of Stay Paid. I'm Joshua Stike along with Luke Acri. And before we bring on our guest today, we'd love it if you take a minute to subscribe to Stay Paid on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. If you're not already subscribed, and while you're there, drop us a review to let us know how we're doing. We'll read it here on the show. Today's featured review comes from Matt Fuelberth hmm. uh, via Apple Podcast. 10 out of 10, five stars. He says, as a new real estate agent with no past sales or marketing experience, this podcast has been unbelievably helpful. I've learned so much that I've been able to implement into to my business and see direct results from. I love That's it. Awesome. Love seeing that feedback. Yep. Thanks, Matt, for leaving that review. Our guest today is Jeremiah Monero, better known as J Man. J Man is a speaker, MC, podcaster, a full time licensed agent, and an associate broker. Through his J Man seminars, he has engaged online and in person audiences worldwide with his infectious energy, improvisation, and spontaneous hilarity. J Man, welcome to Stay Paid. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited. There we go. <laughs> Jay, man, I love the name. We might have to get into that, but we'd love to hear your background, man. How did you get yeah. into being an agent and building up to where you're at today? Yeah, so real fast, uh, I moved. I was originally from Rochester, New York, upstate New York, between Buffalo and Syracuse. I moved to New York in my 19s, 20. Uh, when I was moving back to Rochester, I had a really bad real estate experience with a successful real estate agent in my area. Hmm. And that motivated me to be like, yo, this guy is doing good and he did not provide great service. Uh, I can crush this business. So how so many was, years has yeah. it been at this point that you've been in? 17 years. Oh, 17 years. 2005, okay. I started when everybody could get a mortgage. And then I, I, I weathered the storm. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You everything. went through the crash, man. So what, what yeah. do you, what, what's your advice to people as the market is shifting right now, right? And, you know, there's a ton of panic. The headlines are always going to be panic. But what's your advice for 2023? Yeah, should be excited. Like when I, when I see change in something and it's more difficult, that's when the order takers are going to go by the wayside, hmm. right? Like the crash hit 2008. I'm like, See you guys. I'm, I was door knocking every single day. Expired through my bread and butter. I'm like, this. Wow. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So adversity you, makes makes great agents. Door knocking expires during that recession. That that's amazing. Yeah, it's the activity. I mean, I, I was listening to a podcast this morning that literally just said, "Look, you can't control the results." as we all know, but you can control the process and the activity uh, that you do every single day. Uh, so we'd love to hear kind of, you know, this uh, podcast is all about sales and marketing, right? How do you yeah. generate leads? How do you, you know, build a business that's scalable and sustainable? You've been at it for 17 years, so you have figured something out. When it comes to lead generation, where's, where's the main place that you focus? Well, now I'm 17 years in, it's my sphere. Okay. But when I first started, uh, the reason why I did so well in the beginning and continued to do well was I came from a prospecting background. I used to sell alarm systems door to door before real estate. So that's why I was like, wait, all I got to do is go talk to people and the people that want to sell have red and white signs that say for sale by owner in front of their house. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Where are they at? And, and, and that's what I did. 43 transactions my first year because like, I don't care if you tell me no, I just, that makes me happy. So like when you approach a door, what tips would you give for door knocking, right? Because it's yeah. like, so people, many people are nervous about door knocking. I'm, I'm nervous about it uh, when I've gone out. What, what would you, what would you recommend? I, I think it's so many people worry about what am I going to say, but it's so what's more important is how you say it, the delivery of it, right? So when I would come to the door, I, I would pick up the red and white sign out of their front yard. Okay. Picture this, pick up the sign bring it up and be like, Hey, how you guys doing? And be like, what? Well, you want to sell your house, don't you? Yeah. Well, the reason why you haven't listed with an agent is because you want to save on the commission. Am I right? Yeah. Well, if I can show you a way we can build that right into the transaction, could we work together today? Yeah. Okay. Can I come in? Start wiping my feet <laughs> in the door, like short, sweet, too many people want to talk too much and ask too many open-ended questions. You know what the hot buttons are for, for sale by owner. And, and, and the whole time I'm like, Right. Like smile. I, I'm, I'm, it's not like, well, you want to sell your house, don't you? Yeah. Enthusiastic. You're, you're, you're excited. Like you have something that they want. Yeah. Like I know you want to sell. I know the only reason why you haven't listed with an agent because you want to save money. Let me show you how we can work together. I'll make you the most money possible. 
You know, Period. It's, uh, it's so powerful. It's such a golden nugget for the audience of the key to sales is being super direct, not dancing around the point, telling them exactly <laughs> what, you know, you know, they want, they're thinking about, Hey, I know you haven't listened with an agent because you don't want to spend the money on commission and you don't think an agent's going to do a good job. But if I could show you a way where you can actually make the money you want and I could take all the pressure off you, would you give me a shot? Yeah, it's beautiful, man. I, I love that. So, okay. So you did a lot of door knocking. Um, now yeah. you're on sphere. Um, when you look at your business today, 17 years in most of your business coming from your sphere, do you have a drip campaign that you do on them? Is there a way you nurture your sphere to drive referrals? How does that look in your business? Yeah. I mean, we drip on them with the CRM. I try to, I'm big on social media. So I, I try to reach out to them like direct message, Facebook messenger, and really engage with them like a human being and not a salesperson. You know, somebody has a, like, somebody's having a baby, like I sent them a message with a video, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I remember when you guys are boyfriend and girlfriend and I sold you that house, right? Like being a human being and connecting with them as a person, uh, I, then I, I don't lose the repeat business because I'm not just their sales agent or somebody that helped them buy the house. I'm, I'm a, somebody who cares about them and, and their future. So now you mentioned video there, sending a video over direct message. I know in your yeah. speaking, right, you talk a lot about video and social media and generating content. What advice do you have people? Like, what are you coaching people on when it comes to creating that short form video or being willing to get in front of a camera and being authentic? Be yourself. Be, and, and it sounds simplistic, but it's the most complicated thing for for anybody in sales, because you you come in, and, and when I started real estate, I was 25 years old, so I thought I had to be what I thought was this professional version of myself, mm-hmm. instead of like, yo guys, what's up? You know, like, instead of just being me. So I think being authentic and, and just getting over yourself, because we are our own worst obstacle, right? We're like, nobody's going to like it. Who cares? It's not about you. It's not about you. It's about the people. It's about the people that you can, you know, you can change their life with every single transaction. If you don't believe in that, retire, go do something else, Be, you know, a greeter at Walmart or something. Mm, boom. Now it's so uh, true. I it was listening to someone who said, basically, look, nobody is going to think about and remember you six months after you're dead, which is the most pivotal moment of your life. When you pass away, you would think people would talk about you the most or things would happen and they, they won't even talk about you six months later. Uh, there's actually a biblical like proverb that says, you know, the, the next generation won't remember the former generation. And the point of that is like, man, if they're not going to even remember you after you die, why do you care so much <laughs> about what they think when you're alive and you let that direct your, right. direct your right. life? So I, I love that when it comes to the type of content that you're recommending, what type of content should I be putting out yeah. So it, it's not just all real estate all the time, right? I think it's content specific to where you live, okay. right? If you want to be, if, if I want to be an expert in, in, in South Florida, then why am I not putting out content of all the best things to do in South Florida? Uh, but also, you know, what are, what are your clients pain points and how can you help them? And, um, best of is my other favorite thing. Like, and I work with agents in, on the West coast and, and Laguna Niguel and those areas where like surfs up, man, everybody's a surfer will tell me the top secret spots to go surfing. Like I'm uh, that's, that's a content, great idea. The best. Right. Stuff, and yeah. and that's, that's all important content and keep it short. Like as, as salespeople, we want to talk all the time. And it's like, say in 15 seconds, which you could have said in 90 and nobody cares about your name, your company and all that that you want to do in the beginning. What about platforms? Are you seeing, uh, I know there's been a shift recently, obviously to TikTok and, and, and other types of uh, platforms. You're kind of nodding along. Is yeah. that, is that where you're seeing a lot of the, the traffic oh. and the success coming from now? Well, it's, I mean, everybody's chasing TikTok's tail, right? Yeah. And, uh, so for me, I always say create one video natively on your phone, take that, and then you can use it on Instagram reels. You can use it on TikTok, and then you could also use it on YouTube shorts, which now, as far as, uh, how dialed up their algorithm is of the three YouTube shorts is explosive. Like you could have zero, like no following on your YouTube channel. And I would say one out of 10 of your posts on, on shorts will go viral for you. Right. I mean, it could be hundreds or thousands uh, on, on a brand new account. It's a great way to get exposure, get subscribers and kind of learn the short form video game. Yeah, we, we can verify that. We see our short videos get way, way more views than our actual <laughs> long form uh, content now. And then we heard from uh, someone, I think it was Landon Carter, who runs a marketing agency saying that YouTube is about to shift or has shifted their algorithm. 
um, that they will, if you watch a YouTube short, they will recommend that person's long form video to you. Mm. So it's really critical that you start putting out shorts because then all of a sudden the long form content that you create, it will be recommended into that person's feed. Yeah. And I was, I call them shorts and pants, but same thing, right? Uh, YouTube shorts and then the YouTube long form video. <laughs> it took me a second, a second to actually get yeah. that when you said, <laughs> but, but it's like, you know, the shorts is, is the attention getter, right? The three C's of filling a funnel, demand attention, conversate, convert, right? So the commanding attention is that short form video. It's that shiny object. If you're a fisher person, you know, it's that lure that gets them in if you think about anybody you've ever followed on any platform, it was something short, entertaining, educational that you're like, okay, oh, these guys, okay, yes. What else do they got? And then if you have something of value that might be a little bit longer as you look through the profile, then you're going to engage further and and that's where, where the relationships begin. I love that. What do you say to someone right now who's struggling? I know you do a lot of coaching. You do a lot of speaking. You probably come across a lot of people who are struggling in their business, uh, in their career. Uh, What do you say to them? Just keep going. You know, I would say success really is on the other side of struggle. Always, always. I mean, in 2008, if anybody who's, who made it through that in sales, you know what I'm talking about. You know, when, you're like, well, you know, there must be an outage in the neighborhood because my gas and electric just got turned off. Like <laughs> an outage that bill didn't get paid in time. Right. So it's like, uh, don't worry about the struggle. You got to stay consistent, mm, right? right? Consistency over time is what builds trust. You can't do anything just one time and hope that, you know, like when we talk about video, it's not just, I did a video. I'm good. I'm going to go viral for it. It's like going to the gym one time and you think you're going to have six pack abs. It's not going to happen. You got to do it over time. You got to stay committed to see results. Mm. Kind of a mindset related question, but I was on your website. I saw you had a couple favorite quotes pulled. Do you have a favorite quote that you sort of go back to, to find inspiration or a mantra that you live by? Ah, man, there's so many, but, and and it's attributed to Muhammad Ali, but it's, that's not true. It's actually Adidas. Somebody in the Adidas copy uh, wrote it and then somehow it got attached to him, but it's impossible. is nothing. Um, possible, just a big word thrown around by small men who find it easier to live in the world they've been given than to explore the power they have to change it. Impossible is not a fact. It's an opinion. Impossible is not a declaration. It's a dare. Impossible is potential. Impossible is temporary. Impossible is nothing. Boom. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Did you read that or do you have that memorized? I read it. I read it. All right. <laughs> you had me go and I'm going to tell. I, like, I, I, that that powerful, man. Sick, I absolutely yeah. love that. We're going to have to include that in the show notes so people can read that back or go back and listen to that. Jay, man, thank you so much for coming on the uh, episode today. We really appreciate it. Before we close out, let people know how they can connect with you or learn about your seminars. Yeah. I mean, jmanseminars.com, pretty easy. Or jman speaks and all the social media platforms. Awesome. Thanks again, man. Thank you uh, all so much for listening. You can dive deeper to this episode, get those links that uh, J man mentioned there over at staypaidpodcast.com. And while you're there, you can read the full uh, show notes as well. If you enjoy this episode and want to show your support, the best way is to head on over to Apple podcast, drop us uh, a comment along with a review and to share this episode on your social media, share it with a friend, share that quote with someone today that you know, needs to hear that. If you want to get hold of me or Luke, you can email us at podcast at remindermedia.com. And of course you can find us on instagram we are at stay paid podcast for this episode of stay paid i'm joshua stike guys i'm luke acree great golden nuggets in this episode the one i want you to take away and take action on is think about how j-man approached the for sale by owner literally brave enough to pull the, the sign out of the yard and go up to that homeowner and speak the truth right to them and i think that is such a powerful action item stop dancing around the point in your sales pitch in your listing presentation in your prospecting call literally speak the truth speak your intention and and speak it with confidence and enthusiasm and watch how the prospect just totally changes because they don't feel like you're selling them. They feel like you're actually being real to them. Remember the difference between top producers and mediocre producers in every single business. It's top producers take action. Take action on that today. 